I desperately wanted to boost my IQ after failing miserably on yet another online IQ test. I'd like to think that I'm a smart guy. However, the test proved otherwise. I rely so heavily on ChatGPT that my brain probably isn't as strong as it used to be. But that's when it hit me. ChatGPT could give me the answers, but how could it really help boost my IQ? Cause it can give me the answers, but what good is that really? I knew I had to do something. I asked ChatGPT, can ChatGPT boost my IQ? And it guaranteed me and returned 10 ways that it could help me boost my IQ. And in this video, we're going to go through them all and see if it really does just that. So what I did was create a custom GPT. There are actually several custom GPTs, but in short, they're created to make chat GPT specialize in certain things, hyper focus on the task at hand. So I created a GPT called IQ Booster. It'll be available in the description if you want to test this out, but we're going to get right into it. All right. So we're going to start. With, our, with some problem solving exercises, we're gonna do the the ball and bat problem. A ball and bat costs 110 in total. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? That seems almost too easy. I'm gonna say 10 cents. So, oh wow. So it says a common initial thought, but let's break it down further. If the ball costs 10 cents and the bat costs a dollar more than the ball, then the bat would cost 110. Oh, right, right, right. If we add the cost of the ball and the bat together, the total would be 120, not 110. Wait a minute, I'm still confused. Hold on. So now it's saying the correct way to set the ball cost is X dollars. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. So that bat costs X plus a dollar. I don't really know that, so I'm going to say IDK, you tell me. So it pretty much takes us through this equation and now it makes sense. So the ball costs five cents and the bat, which costs one dollar more than the ball, would be 105. Together, they add up to 110. So so already off the rip, bro, I can tell you that my brain is opening up. But let's go to the next problem. So the three light bulbs, you're in a room with three switches, which correspond to three different light bulbs in another room. You can flip the switches however you like, but can only enter the room to check the bulbs once. How do you determine which switch corresponds to which light bulb? Take your time and think about it, and when you're ready, share your solution. Okay, so let's see, let's see there's three switches, three bulbs. Let me ask, are these switches labeled? Okay, they're not, they're not switching. And you got to be able to tell all three. I don't know. Man, I built this thing and I hate to see it in hard mode. This is easy mode. So this, okay, this makes sense. Pretty much turn on the switch and leave it on for a few minutes. After a few minutes, turn off the first switch and turn on the second switch. Leave the third switch off the entire time. The bulb that is lit is connected to the second switch, the one you left on. Leave the bulb that is on the bulb that is off and warm or too hot to touch is connected to the first one, the one that you left on. Okay, okay. The bulb that is off is cool and connected to the third, the one you never turned on. Okay, that way you can... Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's go next. It says a farmer needs to transport a fox, a chicken, and a sack of grain across a river. The boat is tiny and can only carry the farmer in one of the three items at a time. If the fox is left alone with the chicken, the fox will eat the chicken. If the chicken is alone, then it'll eat the grain. How can the farmer get all three across safely? Take the chicken. Let's say take the chicken. Because, yeah, you didn't say that. Okay. Okay, so my IQ is raw a little bit. Okay, so eh, that's, 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 I ain't gonna lie, it's a little odd. Like how are you, I wasn't even thinking about going back. I'm just thinking once you get them to the other side, you're good. Oh, but you can't, right? That's part of the riddle because if you take the chicken first, leave it, take the grain back, the chicken will eat the grain. So the farmer goes back, take the, leaves it on the, farmer takes the fox across the river, however that he can leave, so he takes the chicken back with him to the original side. Next, the farmer leaves the chicken on the original side. Oh, okay, okay. All right, I bet if we had this visually, it would help, but let's go next. 
how many people need to be in a room for there to be a 50% chance? I'm going to say uh, that they have the same birthday, 100. Okay, so this is the birthday paradox. Um, you only need 23 people in a room for there to be a 50% chance that two of them share the same birthday. So with 23 people, the chances of a shared birthday reach 50% and with 70 people, it goes to 99%. Wow, I didn't know that. Let's go next. Okay, the prisoner's dilemma. You and another prisoner are in separate cells, unable to communicate. The guards offer you a deal. If you betray the other prisoner, you'll be freed and they will serve three years. If they betray you while you stay silent, you serve three years and they go free. If you both stay silent, you each get one year. If you betray each other, you both get two years. Without knowing what the other will choose, what's your strategy? Think about this approach. I don't know. I think the answer is to be free. So betray the other prisoner. I feel bad. So it pretty much breaks down in this dilemma. If the prisoner stays silent or choosing to betray the prisoner is a common strategy, especially when viewed through the lens of individual game without collaboration. The choice reflects a fundamental concept in game theory known as the Nash Equilibrium, where given your lack of knowledge about the other prisoner's decision, you opt for the choice that seems to minimize your potential loss or maximize your personal gain. I mean, honestly, at this point, you got book smarts and street smarts, and I see why certain people stand on street smarts, because I, I feel like in this situation, you would almost expect the other person to try to get down on you, so you got to get down too. So the best case scenario is you go home and you actually ran across a righteous person who would have stayed silent and got y'all both just one year. But, you know, you either get your freedom or you only get two years versus the maximum three. But the chance of y'all both staying silent unless y'all were really good friends is zero. So that one was easy. All right. Now, this now these debate exercises I already like because honestly, that's what this is going to make us do is argue on both sides. And that's how you truly learn. Number one, how to kind of see everybody's per perspective in an argument and a debate. But number two, um, just exercise your intelligence. All right. So they want us to start. So two sides of a coin, social media, more beneficial or harmful. The task is to write down both points for both sides of the argument. So first, we're going to start with beneficial. It connects the world. People can. So I said it connects the world and people can make businesses. Great point. Social media does connect people. Well, it doesn't help that they gave me the answers right here, but it's pretty much it. Mental health, lack of exercise. And I'm sure I butchered that word. Okay, yeah, that was easy. That was easy. Both sides of the coin. Okay, cool. Let's go next. So this is the why game. This exercise helps you delve deeper into the reasons behind beliefs or statement, fostering a more profound understanding and critical examination. Let's pick a sample statement. It's important to eat healthy foods. Now ask why and provide an answer. Then we'll ask why again in response to that answer and so forth and so forth up to five times to explore the depth of reasoning. First, why? Why is it important to eat healthy foods? Because it helps maintain good physical health. Now you ask why in response to the answer. Okay. Why does eat, eating healthy foods help maintain? Eating healthy foods provides body with the essential nutrients. Okay. Okay. Why do essential nutrients support the immune system, aid in body growth and repair, so on and so forth? And it pretty much goes and say, I'm going to say, let's end it here. What should I have learned? Because I don't get it at this point. Oh, okay. There's layers of answers. Right. Okay. 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 I can dig that. I can dig that. Let's go to the next one. Common fallacies. Understanding common logical fallacies can significantly enhance your critical thinking skill, your critical thinking skills by helping you identify flaws, flaws in arguments, whether in your reasoning or others. This is important. Here are a few common fallacies to consider. Add however you say his last name. This fallacy occurs when someone attacks the person making the argument rather than the argument itself. For example, saying someone is pointing invalid because they have no formal education on the subject. Straw man. This involves misrepresenting someone's argument to make it easier to attack. 
For example, if person A says we should have more nutritional options in school and person B responds by saying person A wants to ban all junk food, person B is creating a straw man. Okay, okay. And not only does this help you identify it, it help you can use it too. So the first thing I'm going to say is hi. It says, hello, how can I assist you? I want to improve my memory. Great, improving your memory is a fantastic goal to best tailor approach your needs. Could you let me know your preferred difficulty? Easy, pro, or midway? We're going to start with easy. And then it gives us the option, so I'm going to do one, memory games. All right, so it says, let's play a simple memory game right now. I give you a list of words and you'll memorize them. After a few moments, try to recall and type back as many words as you can. All right, so it's been a couple minutes and out of all those words, I remember apple, elephant, and really that's it. Wow. Now we got to play it straight up. So I'm going to say only remembered one and two. See, here's where this GPT shines. It tells you to create a vivid story in your mind, linking the words together, for example, Imagine an apple and an elephant at the base of the mountain with the river flowing by a chair painted blue where someone is feeling happiness playing a guitar, riding a bicycle, and looking through a window. I actually used to do that in school in Spanish class where I would remember words based on what they sounded like in English. All right, but we're going to explore another type of memory game. So let's, do, let's say let's do another game. So this memory game is called Story Chain. In this game, I'll start a story with a sentence and you'll add to it. Basically, the point of this is to help your memory out by keeping the story going and remembering parts of the story. A curious cat named Whiskers found a mysterious key in the garden. I said that key was to a safe that held a hundred million. All right, so they added inside the safe, along with the money, there was a strange glowing map leading to an abandoned lighthouse. And I'm going to say, and in that lighthouse, there were $1 billion cash. So they added, Whiskers decided to embark on an adventure to the lighthouse, enlisting the help of a wise old owl named Oliver. I put Oliver only had 30 minutes to live. They added, in a race against time, Whisper, Whiskers and Oliver quickly set out towards the lighthouse, guided by the stars and glowing map. So then I said, when they got there, the money was still there, but Oliver is now immobile and can't help at all. Despite his condition, his wisdom was still a beacon for Whiskers. He advised Whiskers to use the light from the lighthouse to signal for help, knowing that friends in the sky could see the signal. I said, Whiskers then realizes Oliver is trying to set him up because why would he let everyone know he found the one billion? Now, I've made the story come to an end, but this is a great memory game because, boom, I can remember Ol Whiskers finds a key. That key actually leads to a lighthouse. On the way to the lighthouse, Whiskers finds Oliver. Oliver, Oliver has a condition. He's about to go in 30 minutes. They get there. Oliver wants him to call for help. But Whiskers realizes it's a setup because why would I call for help? All right, so your intelligence, your IQ isn't something that's static, meaning it's a muscle that you constantly have to use. It's a muscle that you constantly have to really exercise. And ChatGPT can definitely help us exercise the brain muscle. As I look back on it, it's not so much as far as problem solving. It's not even just trying to jump to the answer, but it's kind of exploring different thought patterns and trying to see how you can tweak that. Let me know some of the skills that you want to improve on some things that ChatGPT can help us with, and I will create us a custom GPT. Just leave it right here in the comments. However, the journey does not end with this video. This is something that we have to continue to do to sharpen our tools. And I want you in the comments to, matter of fact, go take an online IQ score. Tell me what your results are. And I actually wanna see what's common, what's an actual common IQ versus something that might be special or might be a high IQ. Artificial intelligence is already changing the way that we making money. It's already changing the way that we're learning things. And I want you to do in the comments, if you already have a high IQ, like you have a proven high IQ already, DM me on Instagram, Rico underscore Copeland, YT on Instagram, DM me because I want to interview you and feature you on the next video. 
Also, my name is Rico Copeland. I teach people how to make money through various side hustles. If you were not already subscribed to me, please hit that subscribe button if this video helped you learn. I also have a ton of ChatGPT videos. I gave ChatGPT eyes. I made ChatGPT scrape the web for products that I'm looking for. The possibilities are endless with ChatGPT. Don't miss out, don't get left behind. Tap in with me, man. Rico gang, I love y'all, let's get it.